It's time for Recipe of the Day. Tomorrow is the 4th of July, and as you probably know, I believe that every good celebration is made better with cheese. Whether that is mac and cheese or a great dip, this cheese sauce recipe that I'm telling you about today will be perfect for bringing that cheese. So this cheese sauce recipe is based on the classic bechamel sauce, which is one of the mother sauces, one of the classic French sauces. That makes it sound like scary and tricky, but it's actually really, really easy to do once you know how. And then the only real difference between this and a bechamel is that we're adding cheese to it at the end. And I add in a little bit of extra things too. I like to put a little bit of Dijon mustard in there and a little bit of chili powder or cayenne. Those just really round things out and cut through the richness a little bit. I've also seen people will use a little bit of buffalo wing sauce or hot sauce, just a little bit. You don't even want to taste it. It just cuts through the richness of all that cheese and really just makes it easier to eat more of it. So what you do is you get out a medium saucepan and you melt some butter over low heat. Now my ratio is always one tablespoon of butter with one tablespoon of flour for one cup of milk. So this one is a two cup of milk recipe. So there's two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of butter. So you're melting the two tablespoons of butter over low heat. Then you whisk in the two tablespoons of flour. I like to use a flat whisk for this. I just find it to be the most handy tool. I really find that it kind of scrapes down at the bottom of the pan really the easiest. Gets into all the like edges of the pan too. I like it the best. So you whisk together the flour and the butter and they're going to form a paste. Then you keep whisking it over that medium low heat for about two minutes. That just cooks some of the flour taste out of there, but you don't want to go any longer than that. You're not trying to darken the flour at all. If you're noticing a color change, you're good. Take it off of the heat. Now, I will say the recipe as it's written does not have you do the next step off of the heat. It has you still doing it over the heat. But if this is your first time doing this, or if you've had trouble with sauces clumping up on you before, taking it off the heat is going to help you a lot. You don't have to move as quickly, and you can really make sure that everything is nice and smooth as you go. So what you're going to do is you're going to drizzle in just one quarter cup of the milk to start while whisking. And that just lets you really make sure that there aren't any lumps forming. Just a little bit of milk and you whisk until it's nice and smooth. Then add a little bit more milk, whisk some more, a little bit more milk, whisk some more. Once you've got like mm, half of the milk in, then you can add the remainder. So it's the full two cups. The recipe calls for whole milk. That's going to give you a really nice creamy flavor. If you want it even creamier, you can use half cream and half milk. Or if you want this to be a little bit lighter, you can use a fat-free 1% or 2% milk. Any of those are going to work. But really the sort of exact flavor, that normal sort of mac and cheese flavor is somewhere in between cream and milk and whole milk does that perfectly. Okay, once you have all the milk added and it's nice and smooth, then you put it back on the heat or increase the heat if it was already on the heat to medium high. Keep whisking the whole time right at the bottom, making sure nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pan. And the reason for that is because it's going to kind of burn. If it's not whisked from the bottom there, it's a little bit thick and it's going to start to brown and burn. And that burnt flavor can actually end up all through the whole sauce. Just a little bit burning at the bottom can impact everything. So you just keep it moving. You keep scraping the bottom, keep stirring, and that's not going to happen. Now you're going to bring that up to a boil over the medium high heat and then let it simmer like that. Let it keep boiling for a full minute. That also is cooking out that flour taste. Then take it off of the heat. And this is when you add in your cheese. I'm calling for two cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. That's going to give you a lot of nice, sharp, cheesy flavor, but not too much much cheese that it gets like too gooey and clumpy. You're also adding in some salt, half a teaspoon, a teaspoon of the Dijon mustard, which is optional, and a pinch of the cayenne pepper. That's what it says here. You could do a drop of hot sauce or two drops of hot sauce or a little bit of chili powder, any of those. They are optional though. You can actually just add the cheese, the salt too, give it a stir, give it a taste, and then see if you want to add anything else. You might think it's perfect and it doesn't need to be rounded out or balanced the way that I was talking about. At that point, you're just stirring until the cheese is all melted through the sauce. It's nice and smooth. And then you serve it. Now, if you're doing this for mac and cheese, you want 
that amount of sauce, the two cups of milk, that is for half a pound of macaroni noodles, eight ounces. If you're doing a full pound box, you would want to double this recipe, which you absolutely can do. Nothing changes except probably the size of your saucepan, just a little bit bigger so you have more room to work in. Otherwise, everything is exactly the same. And then for something like broccoli, about half or even a little bit less than half of this recipe is going to be good for a head of broccoli florets, similarly a head of cauliflower florets that you've cooked, then you mix the cheese sauce in. You always want to add the sauce when it's warm. If it has come down to room temperature, heat it in the microwave in a microwave safe container for sort of 20 or 30 seconds at a time stirring in between, or it could be in the saucepan on the stove. You just want to be stirring it regularly so that it doesn't burn. Same as before. If you're serving this as a dip right away, just serve it, or you can microwave it, like I said, to warm it through again, and you can totally keep this warm in a slow cooker. That's going to work. Just some like nice bits of bread to dip in there. Crudite, you know, the cold veggies. I would love celery in here. I'm obsessed with celery and cheese sauce. Any of that is going to be perfect. I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. Everything there is arranged by date, so it's helpful to know that today is July 3rd of 2024. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookville.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking.